Okay, welcome to this lesson today, which is going to look at um, putting in the slab for your cottage. So if we go back to the initial uh, plans, and we can see the floor plan here, we have the outline of the slab also defined as the outline of the external walls. So this thick black line here you can see is the wall line, which is also the slab. Now slabs, of course, uh, are made from concrete and some information is given to us about this slab over in the uh, details over here. So we can see it says slab is made from 100 millimeter thick concrete. Uh, this information about the uh, strength of the concrete and also the type of mesh that's been used. So 20 MPA relates to um, the mix of uh, sand and concrete and water and so on. And also the F62 uh, relates to a type of reinforcement fabric that goes through the actual slab. It also says that the slab area is to be treated for subterranean termites, meaning that before the concrete would be poured onto the exposed ground, it would be sprayed with a, a chemical to stop termites then coming up through that slab. So we need to find out the size of this slab. Um, so we can see here on this floor plan um, that the slab follows the lines of the walls. And if we continue those lines down, we can see these dimension lines here lining up with some of these features. So we can see the external wall here on this front elevation and it goes up to this line here, which happens to line up, of course, with the wall up here on the floor plan. Same on the left-hand side. So if we're looking for the dimension between the very exterior uh, lining of that wall and that wall there, and if we bring that down, we can see we have a dimension or a, a leader line and then a dimension line of 6,000 millimeters between the, uh, the two leader lines. So we know that the slab distance in an X direction, if this was a, a Cartesian graph, uh, would be 6,000 millimeters. The other dimension we need is its height. We do the same thing. We can see the elevation over here on the left gives that information. There's the wall, bring it across, and we can see we've got a dimension of 7,200. So remember that, though, it's 6,000 by 7,200. Let's go back to um, Archicad, and we're in our floor plan view. A um, couple of things that um, you might want to also know about is sometimes um, you can lose some of these functionality. So uh, you might accidentally uh, close the toolbox or close the info box or something and you, you go, what do I do next? So to get that back up, you simply go to Options, Work Environment, Apply the Profile, just like we did when we started the whole drawing, Stated Profile 19, and those things come back to us. So if you ever lose any of the um, toolboxes or info box, just use that options, just go over it again, work environment, apply profile, okay? All right, what do we actually want to draw? We're going to draw a slab. So in the toolbox, we come down, we find the slab tool. There it is there. And we need to open up the properties of this slab, which means we need to go to the info box, where you can see here the slab uh, icon is, click onto it. And it opens up and tells us what the current settings of the current uh, slab are. Well, it just so happens that we can see here in this preview that the slab thickness is currently set to 100, which is what it said it was going to be, which is good. And we need to understand uh, what these boxes here mean. You can see that this um, black arrow that extends from the bottom here up to the top, that represents what we call um, the distance to the current story. So what story are we currently in? We're in the ground floor. We can see over there, I've double clicked on GF and it's bold. That means then that the top of this slab there is at zero uh, height. So uh, this slab is going to go in below the zero height of that story. What will the slab be made from? We'll look over here to the right hand side and this is what we would see if we were to see the slab in section. You can choose uh, by clicking onto that icon there, all the different materials that you have at your option or at your, at your um, uh, you can choose from. And we can see here uh, precast, uh, concrete precast, structural, block, uh, cladding and so on. So let's choose concrete structural. Oops, try that again, concrete structural. 
and you can see here the icon is on basic if you went for the one beside it composites there's other ones that you can choose from as well but let's just keep it to a basic slab by choosing that left icon there and structural concrete uh, going down through the rest of the options don't worry too much about reference plane and so on here but what we might change is in the model we might change what the material uh, looks like on top on the edge and so on so remember to turn these materials on so we can edit them you need to click on to the uh, options here so this this model box relates to um, changing the way that surface appears so the top surface of the slab click onto it there and I chose for mine uh, timber oh, it keeps jumping out of there Timber, something or other, so just type T for timber. Uh, where are we? I might go timber, pine, grain, horizontal, that'll do me. And I don't want the edge of the slab to appear as timber. I want that to appear as concrete. Um, so what I'm doing, click on that edge there. And then I'm going to type C for concrete. Hopefully there's one there under concrete. There it is there. Concrete panel, that'll do me. And then for underneath, oh look, we never really see underneath, but I suppose I should make that concrete as well, just in case. Uh, turn that on there, of course. Click in the box, see for concrete. And what was it? Concrete panel, I made that one as well. Okay, and uh, with this button unchecked, make sure that means we can have different materials on the top and to the edge and to the underneath side. The last thing to check when you're setting up your slab is that the slab is in the general layer. Layers are kind of like um, uh, sheets on a paper, I suppose, or, or many sheets that you can put over each other. You can turn them on and off, make sure it's on slab general. And for some reason, my slab went to 205. That was because I jumped out and made it a uh, composite for a second there. So 100 mil, zero slab top to current story is zero. Click OK. Now let's insert the slab. So the slab insertion, you have a number of different methods here. If I click on the uh, one to the left here, and it just inserts, inserts the, in a um, random sort of position like so. But I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to edit that, go back out. One beside it there is a geometry method, which is a rectangle, square, whatever. So let's choose the geometry method, that one. Uh, move your cursor then somewhere inside this um, floor plan area here. Uh, click once on the left hand side and then drag the cursor away. And you can see it's wanting to make a box. And it's got a dimension 1 and dimension 2 uh, as coming up. Uh, if the dimension 1 dimension 2 isn't coming up as you're dragging the cursor away, you need to turn that on in the tracker up here. See it says show hide tracker. If that's not highlighted in blue, you won't see that. So you might need to turn that on in yours. Okay, so to get this exactly the right size, I'm going to hit D on my keyboard. And you can see D brings up a whole lot of other um, controls over where this final point goes. I want to put in a, or give the computer a, uh, an X direction. So you can see here the arrow is pointing in an X direction of the graph. So click there on that top one. And we said it was 6,200 millimeters in an X direction. Don't click enter, but click on the next one below, which is the Y direction. And that was 7,000, uh, actually it was 6,000, that's all right, my mistake. It was 6,000 in the X direction and 7,200 in the Y direction. Once those two are checked, um, then you can simply hit the enter key and it will place that slab in, in the correct size. Uh, you could check that by going to the measure tool. There it is there. And you could measure from point to point. Oh, it's interesting, I have to check that. What have I done there? There we go. So you can see it highlighting there, 6,000. And you can even, if I keep going with that, you can even do area and all sorts of cool things. So you can see, you can check length, area, and all sorts of stuff. But we won't worry too much about that. We'll get out of the, the measure tool. It's good to check that. Okay, so that's uh, basically inserting the slab. You want to see that in 3D. Uh, up here in the toolbox, there's your floor plan view. Beside it is your 3D window. Um, now, in 3D, um, generally, it will default 
to the generic perspective. I'll look over here in your navigator, you can see generic perspective. Below that, if you double click on it, it says generic axonometry. Um, that's what we might know in, in um, uh, our other type of graphics as um, uh, isometric, I suppose. But generally speaking, I always keep things in the perspective view. So double click on perspective. Um, you can use your center mouse button on your mouse to um, grab and to scroll around. You can use down the very bottom here, there's some functions. You've got an orbit tool, which if you activate it, then allows you to uh, roll like so. Uh, getting out of the orbit tool, you also have your um, explore or, or functions like you might have in gaming. So if you click on explore there, and then you can use your arrows on your keyboard in, out, uh, left and right, and wherever you point the um, the arrow, that's uh, the cursor of the mouse, I should say, that's where you go. So a couple ways of navigating around there as well. Okay, um, so I'm happy with that slab, and let's save that. I always go back to 2D, uh, just to save, so just click on the 2D floor plan icon there, and then hit your save button.